Now, if you've been following us for a while here on eFix, you'll know we're big fans of the proper use of torque setting devices. In fact, we've carried out some pretty interesting research in our Talk the Talk campaign to test the claim that some Sparkies make that they've got the right torque setting in their arm. Spoiler alert, turns out they don't. Cue the angry comments below. We've also created a completely free training package on the subject of torque, and whether you're a torque acolyte, agnostic or sceptic, you'll find something of interest in there. So please check out the links in the description below and let us know your thoughts. In this video, we're going to look at a torque setting device from Weha that is a step up from the standard analogue device that we've used a lot on the channel. It's the Weha iTorque. And stay tuned to later in the video for a helpful hint on how to get the driver to the right setting at the higher end of the torque setting scales. Now, the first thing I love about this tool is the case that it comes in. It's really sturdy and a suitable vessel for such an important bit of kit. And as you undo the solid locking clip at this end and open it up, you can see the driver is seated in this foam padding. It gives a nice air of ceremony to using it. Similar, I imagine, to how the crown jewels are transported. Now, the first thing that you may notice is that there's this little screen on here, and this is where the iTalk starts to show that it's a notch above the standard analog driver, because this is used to inform you about various things that were going on with this driver. We'll look at that in a little more detail in a minute. There's a couple of printed documents as well. One is the works proof protocol or factory test certificate, and there's a little bit down here for you to fill in the start of use date. Again, we'll see the value of that a bit later in the video. The other document is a user manual that shows you the key elements to using the driver in various languages. Then, if you remove the body of the driver, you can see that there is a bit holder for the driver that just slots inside the handle. So that just goes inside there, and once that's seated, you're good to go. And you can use that with a variety of driver bits. So, how do you actually get it working? Well, on the opposite side of the handle to the LCD screen, you can see it's got this on-off symbol. And while it doesn't look like that's actually a button, because it sits perfectly flush with the surface, but pressing on it will turn the screen on to display whatever the last torque value you used was. Now you'll notice in the top left of the window there the units that are currently being used, and to start with it's in Nm, or Newton meters. A long press for three seconds or more will switch from Newton meters to INLB, or inch pounds, which is super helpful if you're listening in from the past. The button has a couple of other functions as well. If we go back to Newton meters again with the long press, we can then do a normal press on the power button and that will change to another display with a C at the top. Now, when you do a screw up with a torque screwdriver and you get to the correct value you've set it to, the driver will click, which is the gearing inside here slipping and preventing you from tightening the connection any further. The display you can see on here now is the number of those clicks that you've carried out with your device and it counts down from 5,000. Once you've gone beyond the 5,000 clicks, the screen will flash a symbol saying CAL, which means it's time to get the device calibrated to make sure it's still operating at the correct torque values. Very similar to how you get your multifunction tester calibrated once a year. Of course, it may be that if you don't use the driver a lot, it may take a couple of years to do 5,000 clicks, and in that case, you still need to get it calibrated once yearly, which is why it's important we record that value of the date of first use we looked at a moment ago. Once calibrated, a long press on the power button from the number of clicks screen will reset the counter to 5,000. Now, to change the torque setting, we look at the back of the driver and you can see there a button. Pressing that causes this dial at the back to move into the torque setting position, and twisting that dial will change the value of torque up and down. Once you've set the dial to the desired value, you just press it back in, it will lock into that position, and you're good to go. Now, you may notice on torque setting devices that the higher the value you set it to, the harder it becomes to twist it to the correct setting. Normally, it's not much of a problem, but we've got two different versions of the iTorque driver here. This one, you can see on the end, goes from 0.8 to 3.0 newton meters, but this other one that I've got in the box over here behaves a little differently. This one has a range of 1.0 to 5.0 newton meters. Once you start getting up to the higher settings on this second version, it actually gets quite difficult to keep twisting it. So you can see there, once we're trying to get up to the five newton meter range, it actually becomes quite difficult to keep twisting it. And so along with this version, Weha have provided a spanner, which can be placed onto this part of the driver at the back here. So that just clips on like so, and that gives you a little bit of extra leverage to achieve the correct value. 
Now, as well as these two versions that we've got here, there's also one that has a range of 0.4 to 1.5 Newton meters, which could be super helpful in certain circumstances. Now, it seems from our research that most people didn't under tighten connections, but rather the problem was connections being made too tightly. And with AFDDs becoming a bit more of a stringent requirement in the Second Amendment, we're finding that most manufacturers are setting on a torque value of 1.2 Newton meters for those devices. And considering that AFDDs are looking for arcs from poor connections, it would be ironic if the connection to the device itself was poorly made. And of course, it's not just electrical connections that need the correct torque setting applied. There's also accessories and equipment designed to seal against the ingress of moisture and dust. Most EV charge points also have a value of torque that the screws on the lids need to be set to in order to properly seal them up. Too little torque and the seal won't be made, too much and the strip can compress, distort and allow ingress. So all in all, torque is not going to be something that's going to be less of a consideration for electricians as time goes on. Indeed, the requirements to use torque setting devices will only become more stringent. So it's critical to equip yourself with the right bits of kit and we at eFix think this is a really good tool to add to your armory. For a lot more information about this subject and the positive impact it can have on your electrical work, check out our free training package on this subject. It's fully accredited by CPD UK and it will contribute to your annual requirement for continuing professional development. You'll find it and others on the know-how page at efix.co.uk or by clicking the link in the description below. But of course, as always, we want to hear from you. Is this your go-to torque setting device or do you prefer the analog version? Have you recently converted to the use of a torque driver or are you a deeply entrenched holdout? Whatever your thoughts or questions, please let us know in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.